Hi, this is Pastor Daryl Myatt from Keller, Texas. Today is Friday, August 2nd, 2019. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I know most of the time I bring you news of the world, and then I bring you the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Today I want to touch base on something. Today I want to talk about some things that have to happen prior to the return of Jesus Christ, prior to the end of the world, as the Bible speaks. Now, I know I've, I've made several videos like that in the past, where I've talked about so many things that have to happen prior to the return of Christ. But I think it's important, you know, maybe you haven't gone through some of my videos of the past. If you go to my YouTube page, you can search under headings. I've got several different categories there. But some of the things that have to happen prior to the return of Christ, I think one of the most important is Israel becoming a nation again, which has come to pass. That was fulfilled May 14th, 1948. This is spoken of in so many places in Scripture. Isaiah 11, verse 12. Ezekiel 11, verse 17. Ezekiel 28, 25, Ezekiel 37, 21, Ezra 38, 8, and so many other places it's spoken about. I think the confirmation of the covenant has to happen. Daniel 9, 27 speaks of. Uh, I believe Damascus will be destroyed. Isaiah 17, 1, uh, Jeremiah 49, 24. I believe the third temple will be built. Revelation 11, verses 1 and 2. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 3 and 4. The Antichrist will be revealed, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3 and 4. There will be a shared temple mount, Revelation 11, verse 1 and 2. There will be, and I think this is one of the next ones we're facing, a one world government. Daniel 7, verse 23, Revelation 13, verses 1 and verses 4 through 10. There will be the mark of the beast imposed. Without it, you can't buy or sell, Revelation 13, verses 16 and 18. There will be a one world religion, people. One world religion. Daniel 7, verses 20 through 25. Revelation 13, 1. Revelation 13, verses 6 through 8. There will be the sixth trumpet war. Revelation 9, 13 through 16. Of course, Psalm 83, this war where they say, Come, let us make sure the name of Israel is remembered no more. Ezekiel 38 and 39. Mark 24, so many things have to happen. I want to talk about this one world religion, though. You know, for a long time, Roman Catholic Church pretty much had control of things. And it seems like today, they're trying to mix things. Like, I've seen this current Pope reading the Quran and praising the Quran and saying that Muslims and Christians worship the same God, which is a horrible lie from hell. We don't worship the same God. You see, the God I worship, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, sent his son Jesus to die on the cross, that all who believe on him will have everlasting life. You see, God sent his son. God became flesh through the man Jesus Christ. And he died on a cross and rose again, just like he said he would. In Islam, they say it's blasphemy to say that God has a son. Their God has no son. Their God says, kill for me, but my God died to save me. There's a big difference. In Revelation 13, verses 11 through 14, it said, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great wonders, so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceive them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. One world government. 
We're seeing Agenda 21, the UN Charter, sustainable development, all these things talking about one world government. If you read the Georgia Guidestones, they speak of having, um, what is it, 500 million people on the earth? Basically do, doing away with two-thirds of the earth? There's some things that have to happen before this can come about. And we're, we're, seeing, we're seeing the fight over this happening even now. Currently, we have a president who's very pro-America, who wants to close our borders and protect Americans. I'm all for that. I think it's a great idea. However, we know that at some point, those borders will cease to exist. There will be a, a one world economy, no borders, no sovereignty in any nation. And having to be submissive to this one world government and this cashless society. We're seeing places all over the world that are doing away with cash even now. There's so many ways to pay without having a credit card or a wallet with you. You can hold your phone up to a lot of these things. Oh, boom, paid, done. Has to be something that happens that caused the world to follow after this antichrist, this false prophet, these two the Bible speaks of. One world religion, one world government. Total control over the world that combines religion, government, and the economy into one giant demonic effort to rule the world. It's coming, people. The Bible said it would happen. And God's word never fails. God's word is always true. It seems we're not that far from getting to this place. You know, many have thought it would be the Roman Catholic Church, but I believe Islam could be both the one world government and the one world religion. You see, Islam is not just a religion, which I, I'm sorry, I fail to be able to categorize Islam as a religion. It's more like a cult from hell. Um... That was the devil in that dark cave that tricked that fool Muhammad into thinking he was the angel Gabriel. That's why the Bible warns us that even Satan can disguise himself as an angel of light. That's why Paul tells us, if we or an angel from heaven come to you with any other gospel other than the one we taught you about Jesus, may they be forever accursed. There's a reason Jesus said in John 3.18 that if you don't know the only begotten Son of God, you are condemned already. There's a reason for these things. Islam has declared everyone who doesn't follow after their ideology to be infidels, deserving of death. Infidels. They put their target on America, which they call the Great Satan, and on Israel, which they call the Little Satan. Spreading their so-called religion by the sword or by immigration, going into all these other places in the world, and then demanding the laws to be changed, Sharia law to be implemented. I see where there's Sharia law in parts of America, and now some of these senators are trying to pass things like making sure Sharia law can never exist in America. It might be too late already. There's already no go zones in America that are controlled by Muslims. That's how they spread, people. That's, that's how they spread their influence, going into areas and spreading their religion by the sword, by blinding those who look for something to fill that empty void inside their own lives. And they look to Islam. They rejected Christianity because they see idolatry and hypocrisy within the church. It's going to happen. 
It's going to happen. Pope Francis is on this worldwide tour to unite all the faiths into one religion. Makes pilgrimages to Muslim countries to convince those of that pagan religion to come together as brothers in a blend of Christianity and Islam. They're calling it Chrislam. This name has been around for several years now. I, I remember doing videos on this back before 2010. Chrislam. Saying things like Allah is God, Jehovah is God. They're one and the same. But one is true and one is false. Yahweh, Jehovah, is a God of grace, a God of mercy, a God of love. The Bible says that God is love. 1 John 4, 16, And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwells in love dwells in God, and God in him. The holy attributes of the one true God of the Bible is a God without sin, a perfect God, a holy God. He's omniscient. He's uh, omnipresent. He's all-knowing, creator of all the universe, who gave his only begotten son, Jesus, as a ransom for mankind, to pay the debt of sin that only a sinless, spotless Lamb of God could. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 but the Pope would want us to believe that this Allah is the same God we read about in the Holy Bible. So who is Allah? What kind of attributes does he have? You know, Allah was one of the many gods that were worshipped in pagan Arabia at the time of Muhammad. And Muhammad he did away with all the gods. There were some, what, 930 gods they worshipped? But the one that they worshipped was a moon goddess. This, this God has feminine characteristics, but it was changed to a male that then made women inferior. Allah is a God of war. They demand jihad or holy war to convert all other people of other religions to Islam by the sword. Allah demands that you sacrifice yourself in acts of murder and martyrdom to promote this religion. To die in his service is to be rewarded paradise. And you'll get some 72 virgins or whatever. Of course, Allah denies he has a son. They say Muhammad is his prophet. Allah has no son. So they deny the very Christ that God sent to the earth to save us of our sins. To save us from death. To save us from hell. They've reduced Jesus to just a good man, a prophet, or a teacher. And they claim he's Muslim also, which is bizarre because Islam wasn't even invented until late in the 6th century after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. More than 600 years after that happened, then Islam came about. And they claim Jesus was Muslim, which is impossible That would be like saying, oh, yeah, the Romans that conquered Jerusalem had electric lights also. They had gasoline-powered cars. Yeah, it's impossible because those things weren't invented yet. It's the same. Islam was more than 600 years after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, before it even came about, before it even came into being. There's no way Jesus could have possibly been Islamic. Mm. So one is God of love and the other is a God of war and murder. The false prophet comes on the scene, speak as a dragon, though giving the false impression of being religious and a leader of purity and holiness like a lamb. He'll claim authority over Christianity. Speak like a dragon. He exercised all the power of the first beast before him. Revelation 13, 15. Cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. The Bible tells us that this Antichrist and false prophet will make war against the saints and actually overcome them. 
Revelation 20 verse 4 tells us, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast. Who uses decapitation? Man, if you haven't seen some of these videos in the past five or ten years of Muslims beheading people in the Middle East, hmm, Islam claims to be the third and final revelation from God in a way that they think gives it authority over Christians and Jews. You know, even in the Hadith, it says the rocks and trees will say, Oh, Muslim, there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come kill him. And yet the world wants to tell you it's a religion of peace. There's no peace in Islam because they don't know the Prince of Peace, who is Jesus Christ. Islam isn't just a cult from hell, it's a political system. Sharia law. Islam's a religion of the sword. They've been using decapitation as the main price for not submitting to their hateful cult from hell. Even the name Islam is interpreted as submission. Submission. So, how long before we see who this Antichrist is? How long before this mark of the beast comes into play? Where, without taking this mark, you can't buy or sell anything. Daniel identified the Antichrist as being the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Daniel 9.26 so it sounds like this Antichrist comes to power through some form of a revived Roman Empire. Hmm. Roman Empire. Maybe coming out of the European Union. How many countries over there are already falling to Islam? There's been hundreds, if not thousands, of Christian churches torn down or destroyed, and more Muslim mosques being built than ever before in Europe. Hmm. In Micah 5, verses 5 and 6, And this man shall be the peace, I believe that to be Jesus, when the Assyrian shall come into our land, and when he shall tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men, and they, shall lay, and they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod, and the entrances thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian, when he comes into our land, and when he treads within our borders. Antichrist, called an Assyrian. Hmm. Assyrian. Now, we do have a place called Syria, currently, but what is Assyrian? I guess we'll wait and see. Um, where was Assyria? What are the modern-day countries that would be in this area? You know, the Assyrian Empire, if you do a little research which was the second biblical world kingdom, it was in the area of Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, Jordan, Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. And if you notice, all of those areas I just named are today Muslim by nature. Notice in Psalm 83 that the enemies of God are saying, come, let us make sure the name of Israel is remembered no more. Then it lists some areas, some groups of people. And those also are Muslim by nature. Enemies of God. They've denied the Son. The Bible says if you deny the Son, you don't have life. You don't know the Father. You know, Jesus even tells us in John 16. John 16 in verse 1 and 2. Maybe three. These things have I spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. 
They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that he does God's service. Jesus goes on to say in verse 3, And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Jesus is telling you, those who think they're killing you in their service to their false God, they're doing it. But they don't know God. They don't know Jesus. Hmm. So, with that in mind, it, it makes you wonder, should we fight against Islam spreading all over the world? Should we fight against God's will coming to pass? I think we need to, instead of being led by our emotions and what we think to be right, I think we need to get on our knees and pray to God that we be led by Him with His truth, with His wisdom, with His Spirit. So we'll know how to react. So we'll know what to do. Pray that God will give us the words to say so that we can shine the light of Christ into this dark world with love, with grace. Not with anger, not with hatred. Letting people know that only Christ can save them. Leading people out of the darkness and into the light of truth that is Jesus Christ. People, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Jesus said the time prior to his return would be a time unlike the world has ever seen or will ever see again. I think we're there. I don't recognize this planet any longer. And just like Abraham, this is not my home. I'm just a stranger passing through. I am just a spiritual being having a temporary flesh experience here on planet Earth. I think it's important to watch and pray. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 11 and 12. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. I think we're seeing it all coming together. And again, I think it's important that we watch and pray because only Jesus can save us. Only Jesus has already overcome hell. He's already overcome the devil. He's overcome the world. He's overcome the flesh. He's overcome sin. And since he is in me, the hope of glory, I'm an overcomer of those things also. And so are you if you have Jesus Christ as Lord, Savior, and King. We're going to see a lot of things that we're going to think shouldn't happen. But we need to trust that God's plan is perfect. Even if we think, I would have done it a little differently, Lord. <laughs> we need to trust Him. We need to seek after Him. And we need to continue to shine the light of Jesus Christ into the darkness until the day we stand before Him. Because we're here to serve. I'm not here to be served. I'm here to serve my Lord and my Savior. And to tell people about the only one who can save them. I pray that God will lead us. That he'll guide us. He'll direct us. He'll use us for his glory. And I pray he'll give us the words to speak. As we seek. To lead the lost out of the darkness and into the light of truth. Let this be your prayer. I love you guys. God bless you. Have a great weekend. And good Lord willing, I'll see you again on Monday.